Hello, and welcome to Relatively Crafty, a knitting podcast. I'm your host, Christy. I come to you from the Denver area of Colorado, where I live with my husband, Ron, our two daughters, Tatum and Delaney, our tuxedo kitty, Lilu, and our dog, Sophie. I was going to say she's a terrier mix, but I think we've actually discovered what she might be mostly, and it's actually not a terrier. Um, I do think there's terrier in here, but um, but we discovered the Portuguese Padango, and um, they come in three different sizes, uh, basically small, medium, and large. I think it's uh, Pequeno, Medio, and Grande. You know, it's Portuguese, so. Um, and we think that she is mostly, or a good portion of a Pequeno Padango, and um, which, I will fully admit it's really fun to say a pequeño pedengo. Uh, we do know that she's not full blood. There's um, still some things about her that that don't fit in with the pedengo. Um, and but it's kind of nice to see that there's possibly what she is. So if you're looking for me on Ravelry, I'm Christy Dash Lael and Christy Lael without the dash on Instagram. We also have a relatively crafty podcast group on Ravelry and. Um, yeah, this is a knitting podcast. I haven't been here for a while. I apologize. Um, I just got back from a two-week trip to Montana, and um, and before then, I was scrambling like a little worker bee trying to get everything set up at work for me to be gone for two weeks. This was the first vacation that I had taken since I started my job, and um, and honestly, it it was really the first it's the first vacation I can remember taking while working. Um, before the kids came along, I don't know that Ron and I really took vacations. I mean, we would like take a couple of days off here and there, but I don't think we took a big trip. And um, I mean, with, with the exception of our honeymoon, but, um, but that was 20 years ago. I don't even remember <laughs> what, how I prepared for that at work. Uh, so this was a, kind of a new experience for me. So that's part of the reason why I've been gone for so long. And I want to, before I get started into everything, I want to apologize for uh, the background noise. I've got a fan going. Summer has hit Colorado and uh, it is hot outside today. It's been in the 90s the past couple of days. It is supposed to cool down uh, into the low to mid 80s um, starting tomorrow, which will be nice. But uh, I live in a two story place and this room is on the second story, which means um, the air conditioning never quite gets up here like it should. So um, in an effort to avoid just sweating <laughs> while I'm podcasting, I have got the fan on low. I'm hoping that it's not going to bother anybody too much, but I do apologize if it is a nuisance. So uh, before I get into all of the knitting content, um, and I will talk about my trip uh, at the end of the podcast uh, if you're interested in that but I wanted to announce the winner of my giveaway that I um, I announced last podcast uh, it was my 3,000 subscriber giveaway and I had just asked everybody to kind of comment uh, below the video and I got lots of comments and I I will be honest I have not uh, drawn the winner yet but I will and, um, and I will put it down at the bottom of the screen. But I just wanted to go over the prize one more time. It is this shawl, uh, which I knit. This is called the Piece of Cake Shawl. And, uh, and then this skein of Hugh Loco, uh, her spin sock in the colorway Petal Pop. It's a beautiful colorway. I also have this phone or tablet stand by Knit Companion to help you when you're using your phone or tablet to look at electronic um, patterns. Um, I'm also throwing in a set of these Clover Locking Stitch Markers. They, um, I don't know if you can tell, but they have little clips here. So if you need a special note to go like, at this point, you should have 25 stitches. Um, you can slip the note in there and clip it to that spot, which is kind of cool. Uh, and then I have a um, just a little cute little uh, bird notepad. It says, sometimes I pretend to be normal, but it gets boring, so I go back to being me, uh, which I thought was adorable. Um, I have a 
Um, lastly, I have a pair of Knitter's Pride Royals. Uh, these are these are not interchangeable. These are um, yeah fixed circulars, um, but they have that spinny thingy, so they spin all the way around, and they're supposed to. So that is the prize. Uh, as I said, I have not drawn yet. I will draw when I start editing this. So the winner is right here. Congratulations. Please contact me on Ravelry. And, um, and yeah, I will get it shipped out to you. Thank you, everybody, for the lovely comments. Um, there were so many nice so many nice things that people said. It was really, it was really pleasant to, to read them all. I did not respond because I didn't want to skew the, um, uh, the, the, the list for when I went to draw the, the names, but, um, but I really appreciated all the kind things. So many people said, you know, I just discovered your podcast, but I'm really enjoying it. Uh, some people said that they came because of the Turkish toe cast on. Uh, tutorial that I posted about a year and a half ago. Um, some people said that they have been watching me since I first started, which is about two and a half years ago now. So it was just really nice to just to, to kind of hear from people. I normally get, I don't know, maybe 10 comments um, on each of my videos. Uh, this one was quite a bit more, uh, five or six times that much. And and it was just really, really nice to hear from all these different people. So thank you so much. Uh, as I said, I did not comment to anybody, but I did read every single one and I loved them all. They meant so much to me. So thank you. And thank you for sticking with me um, through, through all of it. <laughs> um, yeah. So knitting. I have, honestly, I kind of have to warn you. This is going to be an F.O. heavy podcast. Um, I have only one whip currently um, that I'm going to show and, and a slew of F.O.s and all but one of those F.O.s is going to be socks. So if you're not into seeing a bunch of socks, then um, you might want to skip this week's podcast. So first, let's talk about the non-sock FO, the single non-sock FO. That is my Hippo for the Holidays uh, 2019 hat that I am knitting. If you recall, I've done the Hippo for the Holidays uh, knit along for the past two years. This is the third year. Uh, the first two years I knit socks. This year I am knitting hats and, um, and I am really enjoying the change. Uh, it's nice not having that pressure to knit a pair of socks out of a specific yarn uh, each month. And um, and I'm using the hats uh, as Christmas gifts, so, um, so it's working out really well because I'm getting all these Christmas gifts knit ahead of time. So June's hat, which I just finished last night. Um, so today is June 30th, by the way, so it's, it's uh, kind of cutting it a little bit close. But this is June's hat on Fred the Head. Uh, and it is knit out of Lolo Did It, Lolo Did It, yeah, in the Simple DK base. Uh, the colorway is Hippo for Mom 2019. And you might notice that it's a little bit slouchier than, um, than the ones that I have knit previously this year. That is because uh, I took this with me on my trip and I did not look closely at what kind of yarn it was. I thought it was her simple worsted. And so I only bought the needles, I only brought the needles that um, I knit for the worsted, which as we know is heavier than DK. So I did the band um, and then realized when I got uh, a little bit in on the, on the stockinette portion that, um, but it was looking like it was at a looser gauge. I don't know why I didn't notice that on the ribbing, um, but uh, but yeah. So I realized, oh crud! <laughs> I I should have knit these on smaller needles. Um, so the 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 rubber the the rubber the ribbing is done on a US four. And normally when I knit DK hats, I do the ribbing on a three. And then um, for the worsted hat, I do it on a seven. For the stockinette this time I went down to a five I had to wait till I got home uh, and then I had to kind of readjust 
uh, my stitch count because um, I was getting some pooling. So I cast on 96 for the ribbing and then had to jump up to 116 for the, um, the stockinette. And so it's, it's made a more uh, slouchy hat, which will be fine uh, for the recipient. You know, they don't all have to be exactly the same, but I will adjust for, um, for the next one that I knit, <clears throat> which um, I've noticed that she isn't really carrying too much of the simple worsted for the, the hippo or the Yeti colorways right now. It seems like she's doing a lot of DK. So I think the rest of the year's hats may be in DK. Um, so yeah, there's that. I finished it last night, as I said, and, um, and it's cute. So that's, that's six months worth of hippo for the holidays hats. I'm halfway through the year. I just made an order for two more months. She's doing uh, first time this year. F this year, she's doing for the first time um, seasonal hippos, hip, yeah, seasonal hippos. So she did hippo for spring and then just released hippo for summer. So I've ordered one of each of those in the DK and I will, um, I will use those uh, for hats. Um, and then I have, I have one more skein That'll be June or J July. I have um, a Yeti. Uh, the Yeti goes to Lallybrook, I think. And then um, Hippo for spring and summer. That's uh, July, August, September. And then I have leftovers. So I think I might do um, like some scrappy hats for the last two. Uh, September, October, November, December. Yeah, for the last two months. Yeah, let's see. Okay, so that is my one non-sock FO. Let's get into the sock FOs. You guys, look, they're done. <sighs> if you follow me on Instagram, then you saw these and you saw my posting about them. I started the first sock of this pair in October of 2012. Yeah, like almost seven years ago. Um, and it took me until January of 2017 to finish the sock. I, uh, this, this one I think is the first one. Um, I started it and I got right to about here or so where I just finished the, um, uh, the gusset decreases. And, and then I just lost my, my color work mojo. I just didn't want to work on them. I didn't want to have to focus on them. And I just kept putting them off, putting them off, putting them off. And so finally in January of 2017, I finished the sock. Felt so good about it. Thought, okay, I'm going to cast on the second sock in just a little bit. Um, and then never cast on the second sock until last summer. And I cast on the second sock at the ribbing got down to about here when we were on our trip for our graduation down to Phoenix um, and realized after I'd gotten all the way down here that I hadn't increased. Um, I did the ribbing at 64 stitches, but color work is a lot tighter. So on the first sock, I had increased to the 72 stitch uh, chart instead of the 64 stitch chart, but I hadn't caught on, um, hadn't remembered that I had done that. So when I did the second sock, I got all the way down here using the 64 stitch chart and, um, and had to rip it all back. And it wasn't until we went on our trip, um, just these past two weeks to Montana that I uh, finally decided to get this thing done. And I, I will fully admit that I would not have picked up this second sock and finished it if it hadn't been for the fact that I mentioned to my mom and my aunt who were on the trip with us that I needed to get the second sock finished and they, they nagged me about it, <laughs> which I apparently needed the nagging um, because I was able to uh, take basically two driving days. We were driving home from Montana. We broke up the, the drive over three days. Um, so the first day, 
I knit the entire leg and the heel flap um, and heel turn and then the I think I took a day off and then the next day after that I knit the entire foot and left the toe when we got home I knit the toe so um, so yeah they're finally done let me take them off the blocker so you can see the beautiful patterning a little bit better they don't show up so well on the on the blockers but here is the top of the foot uh, this is called the fireweeds socks by rose hyver designs uh, on the back of the leg you have the same fireweed design and then on the foot you have this lovely um, motif I don't know what you call it um, but it's very easy to memorize and it makes the foot pleasant to knit. Um, I've had some questions uh, about my gauge, uh, specifically from Topher. You always ask the best questions, Topher. And yes, my gauge did change uh, over the seven years that it took me <laughs> to knit this pair of socks. I think the second sock is looser than the first, um, but I don't think it's going to be a problem. Um, these are color work socks, which means they are meant to be worn in really cold weather when you want something snuggly and um, and you're not not really going to wear them with shoes unless they were loose hiking boots. I know a lot of people in, in Scandinavian countries wear these to hike with and I could see doing that but you would need to wear loose shoes. I will probably just be wearing them around the house um, on the really cold nights and um, so it doesn't matter if one fits slightly tighter or slightly looser than the other. Um, but I am really glad that they're finally done. It has been hanging over my head for such a long time. Um, and I love the way they turned out. I love the colors that I picked. These, this is uh, Hazelknit Artisan Socks. Hazelknit Artisan Sock in Vamp for the red and Electrolyte for the green. I love the contrast. Um, so yeah, they're done. They're done. I never have to knit them again. I don't have to look at the project bag taunting me and saying, Christy, when are you going to finish me? Um, I, yeah. And since I knit both, I don't have to come up with the excuse like I did with the uh, pumpkin spice latte mittens that I tried to knit last year where, oh, I'll just finish one and then put it on a blocker and then never have to wear it. This time I have two so I can wear them and they don't have to be displayed. So yeah, well that is my first sock FO. And then the rests, let's see, I have how many more pairs? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight more pairs of socks that are finished. They're all stockinette. Um, I, it's since it's the summer my sock mojo has come back um, I it's too hot to knit on my sweater uh, my hippo for the I, I brought my um, scrappy hippo sweater with me on our trip and I didn't even touch it because it's just it's just hot it's a big thing and it's cumbersome and we were going on a lot of drives and, and hikes and stuff like that and, and um, couldn't really take it with me so I just knit socks and I just want to knit socks at home because it's because it's hot and um, socks are easy. So here is one of the first pair I finished. This is out of a sock blank. Um, I got this sock blank at the um, uh, Yarn Fest uh, in Loveland in April. This is by Melting Pot Fibers. Uh, it's a 7525 blend. It's uh, 75 superwash merino, 20% nylon, and 5% stellina. Uh, although they, it's a very, you, I don't even think you can see. I honestly, looking really closely, I can't really see the stellina. These are not very sparkly socks, but I decided to knit these for my daughter Delaney. Um, and I was going to knit three, but I got bored. So I decided just a pair, uh, but this was the start and uh, then it just went as a rainbow. And here is what I've got left of the sock blank. Um, 
which probably would have been enough for one more pair of socks, or one more sock, but um, yeah, I just, just kind of got over it. So um, that's done. And Delaney is very excited. She actually has three pairs of socks in here. Um, I have kind of discovered that if I start a pair of socks and decide halfway through that eh, I'm not really feeling them for me, then I can just adjust them slightly and make them for her. And uh, she's happy. Even if I uh, don't change the heel placement, um, she will still wear them. She does not have any qualms about having loose socks, um, saggy socks, if you will. So, uh, so yeah, she'll just wear whatever hand knit sock I present to her. Um, so yeah, these ones I did make to fit her foot. Um, yeah, so they will, they will fit her perfectly. Another pair that I started originally for me and then changed my mind and made them for Delaney. <laughs> Actually, yeah, all, all three of these, all three pairs were ones that I originally started for me and then changed my mind. And I normally don't have to worry about keeping hold of the tags for these uh, socks because I normally remember what yarn it is, but I'm not sure I will, so I might have to put some of the information down below. Uh, this is a pair of um, mustache yarns in her Perfect Pair Sport, and I believe it's called Autumn, Autumn Rainbow, maybe? Um, and it was one of those where I, I, I don't know if you recall, I, I made an order, she does um, partial skeins that she sells, and I really like them because I could make a pair of shorty socks out of them. Uh, so, I bought one a year ago and it was like 30 grams and then I bought another one this year and it was about the same. So I thought, well, I can do a, a single sock out of each one, but I hadn't caught on that they were the perfect pair. So that meant that each hank um, was split into two exact matching um, skeins. And so that meant that um, I couldn't just make, well, I mean, I, I guess I could, but they wouldn't have matched. Um, so I, this up to about here, I think, yeah, I think actually exactly this purple was the beginning of the second skein. So this, this was all one of the ones, I think it was the one that I bought last year. And then the one I bought this year is this purple, the heel and all the way up to here. And I just wanted to knit the entire all the yarn that I had. So I, um, I knit, I just kept knitting stockinette and then kind of treated them as a rose sleeve roller. Uh, but I kind of discovered that I don't like them up too high with the rolly. Um, however, it will not bother Delaney at all. She ends up taking my longer socks that I've given her and folding them in half on the leg. So this will be perfect for her. So I decided to go ahead and give these to her. This colorway is gorgeous. Um, I I thought that I would like this part the best, but I really like this purpley blue area. Um, yeah, uh, I if you are new to the podcast, I start m almost all of my socks toe up with a Turkish cast on. Um, I knit them with a forty inch uh, US one circular needle, and I do magic loop. I did this time. I did a fish lips kiss heel. Um, but I do go back and forth between a fish lips kiss heel and an afterthought heel. And, um, yeah, knit until I got to where I was almost out of yarn and then did a Jenny surprisingly stretchy bind off. And that is pair number two for Lou. Um, Delaney, it, her nickname is Lou. So. Then pair number three was a pair that I had uh, started while going to the movies. I needed something quick. We had made a quick decision to go to the movies to see Captain Marvel, and um, I was not prepared. I did not have a sock on the needles, 
uh, that I could knit in the dark for the movies. And um, so I just ran up here. I had five minutes to run up here and um, I grabbed this. This was Knit Circus. Um, Mermaid Lagoon, I believe is the colorway. And Knit Circus comes in two um, already skeined, already wound skeins. And um, then they, she does gradients. And so uh, this was what I picked up. Um, and I just started with the center, which was the green. And I basically just knit a big long tube until I got it to the length that I wanted um, and then decided to use the last bit, uh, which was the dark blue, uh, for the heel. And um, I don't know, something about this just didn't speak to me. So I asked Delaney if she wanted them. She said, yeah, she likes the, she likes these colors. Uh, so it worked out perfectly. So these will go to her. And this is when I've done the afterthought heel. You can always tell um, an afterthought heel or a wedge heel because it's got the um, kind of like a, a line of, um, of decreases here. It's almost like an arrow pointing. Whereas the uh, fish lips kiss heel kind of looks and this is why it's got its name. It kind of looks like fish lips kissing. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, so that is pair number three. Then I've got a pair for my mother. I brought these with me on my trip. My mother and my aunt were both on the trip with me, my dad as well. And, um, and they saw this yarn and said, who are those socks going to be for? And I said, well, I can make them for you. And they both said, me? And I said, wait, uh, maybe. So, um, I got two pairs of socks out of one skein of yarn. And I did that by using a lot of contrast, uh, for heels, toes, and cuffs. That is how you can stretch a skein of yarn. It also helps if you have people with small feet. Uh, my mom wears a size six and a half uh, women's. My daughter, or my daughter, my aunt wears um, shoes that are smaller than my daughter's. I think she wears a child's, a little child's size three. So um, she has very small feet. Um, so here is the pair that I made for my mom. This is Knitterly Things Vesper Sock. If you recall, I've been, um, I'm a member of her Color of the Month Club. This was January's color. It was red. Uh, I think it was called Firecracker or Light It Up. I think I think this is called Light It Up and then the, uh, the mini was called Firecracker. Um, maybe I'm wrong. And I just had some black that I used for heels, toes, and cuffs on mom's pair. Aunt Kathy's pair, I can't put on blockers because they are so tiny. Uh, moms for okay so for mom she likes her socks not to be too tight so I do 64 stitches which is what I do for Ron socks um, and and it's if I'm knitting socks for for somebody that I'm not familiar with that I've never knit socks before I normally knit 64 stitches for me um, I knit 60 stitches because I like my socks to be snug uh, unless I'm doing a fish lips kiss heel, in which case I might knit 62 stitches. Um, Aunt Kathy's, I thought, um, I thought, well, I'll, I'll, I've got to decrease the stitch count. Um, I ended up decreasing down to 52 stitches <laughs> because her feet are just so small. So here is the front. The, the, the foot, uh, the top of the foot of Aunt Kathy's sock, uh, 52 stitches. It, it does not fit on a sock blocker. Uh, well, there, yeah, okay. I can kind of get it on a sock blocker. There you go. Um, like I said, she's got very small feet. Um, so 52 stitches and, um, and they fit her just right. I probably could have gone up to 54, 56 
here, um, but but they really they fit her nicely, honestly. So I used the um, heel toe and cuff skein that came with the skein um, on her socks, and um, they worked out perfectly. So I got two pairs of socks out of one single skein, um, just adding a little extra for the heels and toes of of one pair, and. Um, and I used up all of the yarn, which is always really nice, honestly. I like when I get to use up all of the yarn. Which is one of the reasons why I buy um, the Mustache Perfect Pairs, or just her, her partials, because I like that I can get um, a small amount and use up all of the skein. So um, I've got two pairs here that I used out of mustache yarns. I also have one last pair that is knit out of Lady Men Fiber Arts in their 50 gram showstopper intermission base, uh, which I like as well for shorty socks because I can use up all of the yarn and get a perfect pair of socks. So here is mustache. This is a pair that I just posted yesterday on Instagram. This is The Last Jedi, I believe is the colorway. This is just their, their sock base. Um, and I used some Lolo Did It for the heels and toes. Um, I think this is Julep. I don't remember what this colorway is. Um, but yeah, it worked out perfectly. I think the... Um, the heels uh, and toes match the colorway really well. Uh, you can tell that this, I think I misspoke earlier, this is not one of the perfect pairs uh, because they, it was just one, it wasn't broken up into two. The, the hank wasn't broken up into two skeins. It was one altogether. So I just knit the first sock and then knit the second sock um, out of what was left. So they, they don't match exactly. Um, but that's okay. I don't need them to match exactly. They're shorty socks. So got that pair done. That was uh, the pair, first pair that I finished on the trip. They were mostly knit already. I just had to like finish up. Um, and those are for me. And then uh, this pair I actually finished before the trip, but I am completely in love with them and you'll see why in just a minute. This was um, another pair, this the mustache yarns in their, this one is actually a perfect pair. Um, and it is this pair. This colorway is called Yo-Yo. Um, and, it, and I wasn't sure exactly what it was gonna do, but I kinda had an idea and it did exactly what I thought. You know, it goes, from red to pink and back, or, you know, pink basically to dark purple, and then it goes back the other way. I just really loved it. I used some Lolo Did It, um, little Lolo for the heels. You might notice that I ran out on the second heel, um, but I had some yellow that, which is also a Lolo did it. I think this is, I think this is Blazing Sevens maybe, and then this is Sunglasses Not Included. Um, so yeah, just, it worked out perfectly. And I made these ones a little bit taller because I did them toe up. Um, same with, with this pair. I did them toe up as well because I wanted to use up all of the yarn. So I did, I think I did 30 rows instead of, for the Rose City Roller pattern. I should have said that. These are Rose City Rollers. Um, although, I guess I guess since I did them toe up, they're not really Rose City Rollers, but um, normally it's like 20 stitches, and I think I did 30 or 35 to hopefully offset the um, falling down in my shoe since I didn't do a heel flap and gusset. I did a an afterthought heel um, on this pair, on both pairs. Yeah. And then the final pair, I did do exactly to the Rose City Roller pattern. Let me 
this is my last FO. So nice to be able to show these socks already. Some of them have been waiting a while. Um, and it is this. And this is done out of um, Leading Men Fiber Arts in their Showstopper Intermission Base, which is a 50 gram skein. Uh, the color weight is long, long stocking, as in Pippi. And um, I absolutely love the way these socks turned out. This marbling effect just makes me so happy. Um, this is uh, the Rose City Roller uh, pattern, as I mentioned, um, and I did them exactly the way the pattern calls for with a heel flap and gusset. Uh, just love them. Can't wait to wear them. I, I, it is now time to wear them <laughs> because it is hot outside. Um, I don't wear my knit socks during the dog days of summer. Uh, if I'm not going to be inside a nice air-conditioned building. So I will wear them to work um, with my work shoes, which honestly are most often chucks. Um, I have kind of a, like a laid-back um, dress code at my work. But at home, I really, uh, I wear commercial socks because it's just too hot outside right now for wool. I will say, however, that when we were on our trip, um, it rained a lot, a lot, a lot. And it was nice because my shoes kept getting wet. My hiking shoes kept getting wet and they are not waterproof, but my wool socks, which I was wearing, kept my feet dry because wool um, naturally wicks away, whisks, wicks away um, dampness, moisture. And um, so yeah, so my feet didn't get really wet, uh, even though my sock or my shoes didn't dry by the next day. It worked out well. Okay, that is all the FOs. I have one single whip, as I mentioned. I mean, I obviously still have my hippo for the holidays scrappy sweater, but um, I haven't worked on it at all, so it doesn't look any different. Um, so I have a sock. It is a Rose City Roller sock. But it's a super bright Rose City Roller sock. Get this out of the way. Okay, so this... I love this colorway. This, unfortunately, is um, is dyed by Carrie at Creative Obsession, and she no longer has her shop, um, which is completely understandable, but still a tragedy, because I loved the way she dyed yarn. Um, there is her tag. Uh, this colorway she sent me, it was like a 55, 52 gram half skein, partial skein. Uh, and the colorway is of oh, 57 grams. Sorry, 57 grams. Um, colorway is called Wham Bam, and it's it's amazing. It's so bright and cheerful. I love it. <sighs> oh, the 80s, how I miss you. Uh, so anyway, I am knitting a pair of Rosity rollers out of it. Um, I'll basically just get a pair, a, a straight pair, and then that will be the entirety of the skein. I love half skeins for, for these shorty socks. And they're super fun. This one is just fun to knit on. This is on our cushy base, which I only have two skeins in. This one and one other one. I'm kind of bummed that I didn't get my hands on more before she closed her shop because I really like this base. It's very cushy. So yeah, that is um, the first sock about halfway done. And um, next time I podcast, I'll have a full pair, I promise. Uh, that is all of my whips, as I mentioned. I did bring along one more sock project uh, on my trip, but I did not get it knit. Um, however, I've got it all wound up, so I can show it to you. It is this. This is Canon Hand Dyes. 
um, and it is in her polar, oppos polar opposites self-striping, uh, where she has two 50 gram skeins that are kind of the opposite. Like this one is going to be mostly chartreuse with gray stripes. This one is going to be mostly gray with chartreuse stripes. And the colorway is called Poison Dart. Um, I love it. This is one of the ones that I bought uh, when I met with her, met up with her uh, at Yarn Fest last year, not the one we just had. And so I thought I should probably knit something that I bought at Yarn Fest last year. So um, these will be the next pair of socks that I get started. Um, I'm excited to see how they look up. I'm hoping to knit them um, concurrently uh, so that I can watch them grow together. That's it. Um, I do have a little bit of yarny acquisitions, but only only three skeins. Um, one is my May Club, uh, Color of the Month Club by um, uh, Nidalee Things. I had mentioned that I was kind of pulling for May to be orange because it's my favorite color and May is my birthday month. Um, it was not orange, but it was the next best thing. It was yellow with some orange in it. Uh, so this is Honeybee with a pale yellow mini. It um, came with one of these. Um, these are like, it's a ring row counter, I believe. It's not something that I will um, end up using, so I'll put it in my goodie bag for a future giveaway. Um, but I will be using this. This is absolutely gorgeous. I've been very pleased with all of the color of the month skeins that I have gotten so far. I should be getting June's skein maybe tomorrow, so I'm looking forward to that. And then while we were out uh, camping. We were, we went to Glacier National Park and so we spent some time um, in the uh, uh, the town right near there which is called Columbia Falls or Columbia Springs. I think it's Columbia Falls. Um, and I happened to look to see if there was any used bookstores. There was one, I went in there, I found a book and I bought it. And as we were getting back into the car, I happened to just look down the street and like two doors down from the bookstore was a yarn shop. So of course I had to go in there. But this is what I ended up getting. This is Fiber Seed in their Sprout DK um, base. It's 9010 uh, Merino Nylon, 250 yards. And the colorway is Queen of Hearts. And I am going to use this to make a cowl for my aunt. Her favorite color is red, and uh, she has just moved to Colorado uh, a couple of months ago, and has, has, is coming from Texas. Austin, Texas is where she lived before, where it does not really get cold. Um, and she is a small woman and older, and so um, she is learning how to deal with Colorado weather. Um, she hasn't made it through a summer yet, or through a winter yet, so I'm trying to get her prepared before it hits. So I thought a nice cowl will um, work for her. And here is the pattern that I'm going to use. Here is also the information. I think it's called Drift. I have it favorited uh, in my queue on Ravelry, but I can't remember what it's called. Um, but yeah, I'm hoping to um, make it for her. And I might find, um, some more of this yarn and make it for me make like a um, this one the, the one in the in the pattern is is longer but I'm thinking about making a closer cropped one as I just love the way that it looks with this um, dye technique so yeah that's all that I bought um, while we were on our trip yarn yarn wise um, I actually didn't buy a whole lot any other wise I got a, a little Raccoon Runny and Christy, which I thought was really cute. Um, I got a cast iron duck, which I thought was really cute. I got um, an arrow. It was only a couple of bucks, and I just thought, well, I don't, I don't need that, but I sure do want it. So now I have an arrow, um, and I got 
some wild huckleberry jam. Uh, huckleberries are apparently very popular in Montana and they taste delicious. Um, the Everywhere you went, they sold huckleberry products, huckleberry candy, huckleberry um, lotion, flavored lotions, or, or um, fragranted candles, uh, jams, jellies, syrups. Um, there was also a lot of choke cherry stuff as well, but huckleberry was the thing, and huckleberry pie. And there was one place we went to, this place actually, Huckleberry Land, um, which is in Hungry Horse, Montana. This is such a great, great place. It's right near the entrance of um, Glacier Park. Uh, so you have like you have, you have Glacier Park, and then I think you have West Glacier, and then you have Hungry Horse. Um, and it's just a little tiny town. And Huckleberry Land was there, and they had huckleberry pies. Um, we bought one. Uh, they were a little bit pricey but we figured we should try it. It was the best pie I have ever had in my entire life. Uh, we broke it up into eight pieces, um, and Tatum, there were seven of us, but Tatum didn't want pie, and so there was six pieces that were eaten. Uh, there were seven of us, as I said, and um, so there were two pieces left, and those went to the men, um, which broke my heart because, doggone it, that pie tasted so good. Um, we did another night at another place. Uh, there was a little like a um, farmer's market. And there was a lady selling uh, huckleberry and peach pies. We tried that one. That one was also very good, but the the pie crust at Huckleberry Land was utter perfection. Um, and the huckleberry and peach pie crust was just okay. So, um, so yeah, seriously, if you are ever in Glacier National Park, um, go to Huckleberry Land and get yourself a pie. It is worth the money. So yeah, our trip, we um, we drove up in the RV. My parents have an RV. Uh, took a couple of days to get up there. Uh, stopped at some, some spots. We stopped at Cheyenne, Wyoming. Um, there was a little botanic garden there, so we decided to make a stop there. We brought our dogs with us. My parents have a, a Papillon and then we have Sophie. Um, it was the first time we were traveling with the dogs, either of us, and um, and it worked out really well. The dogs fight a lot at my parents' house. Uh, my parents' dog, Pippin, is um, emotionally scarred uh, from her life before uh, my parents adopted her. And, um, and she has um, problems with men and she's very unhealthfully attached to my mom um, and and fights Sophie a lot and uh, we were really pleasantly surprised that they the dogs hardly fought at all and they traveled really well there were no no episodes of car sickness there were no um, messes in the RV they went potty you know, on the road, you know, like when we made stops like they were supposed to, they slept on the road, um, didn't get into things, um, slept all night in the RV, uh, like they were supposed to, they were really well behaved. Um, I will say that Glacier National Park is not really dog friendly. Um, there's not very many places that you can take the dogs, but we, um, we kenneled them, uh, on the days that we needed to be able to get out and hike, which was not very expensive. It was like $20 per dog per day. Um, and we dropped them off in the morning and picked them up in the afternoon and it worked out really well. Um, there was one place we stopped off on the way up. Um, as I said, we stopped off in Cheyenne and then we went to the, um, we went to Little Big Horn. Um, which is, of course, a battleground where General Custer uh, lost his life because he made some stupid decisions. Um, and, uh, and so we were able to go to a little bighorn and check that out. Um, that was one of the places the dogs were not allowed, so they stayed in the RV for that hour or so that we were in there. Um, that was a, a moving place. Um, it was very interesting because 
the battle happened and then a couple of days later a troop came through um, and was able to see the aftermath and they marked where every soldier fell so there's um, markers you know grave markings um, gravestones I guess um, for each person where they fell so it just kind of like speckles the the landscape um, that was very interesting and then we went to um, the Lewis and Clark caverns uh, which again the dogs weren't allowed in but they had um, free kennels that were nice and covered um, you basically gave your driver's license to get a lock to the kennel put your dog in there and then um, went on the tour of the caverns I love caverns I just I absolutely loved it there the, the Lewis and Clark caverns were amazing I've been to a couple of other different caverns um, uh, one that I could remember well is the Carlsbad caverns I was there when I was 17 um, but this one was I, I loved it so much more I really really enjoyed it um, and yeah, it was a great experience um, to have with the kids they had never seen anything like that before and um, and they were able to really enjoy it Delaney was enthralled um, we stood at, near the entrance and there were bats that were flying in and out um, every once in a while we'd have them they almost flew you know like if we had reached up at right at the right time we might have touched them they were it was it was so super cool and then to see all the different um, all the different structures growths that are that happen in the caverns uh, stalactites and stalagmites and, and the like um, they were just all it was all amazing and Delaney was just learning and just having a fun and um, she was able to answer one of the, the guide, tour guides questions uh, correctly he had asked uh, asked us all to think about how bats might get a drink of water um, and she um, she had a guess she had a theory I guess you could say um, and mentioned it to him and uh, on the way to the next spot and he said make sure that when I ask um, for everybody's ideas that you say that idea because you're on the you're on the right track and um, so she felt really proud um, you have to remember that Delaney is very um, shy and does not like to call a lot of attention to herself so um, but she also likes to know things and learn things and so it was it was a nice thing for us to see her speak up in this crowd of people um, and I know that part of that is because she had the like the uh, the already affirmation from the, the tour guide but yeah, you know, she was talking about maybe um, studying caves when she grows up and it's it's nice to see um, her branching out um, into something that's completely foreign um, from her life up until this point um, so that was cool and then we uh, finally got up to Glacier National Park we camped at this little campground outside in West Glacier and um, and it was gorgeous it was it was basically in the forest um, we had the RV as I said but um, there was lots of trees and and it rained every day while we were there but it was okay because it was clean and cool uh, everything was so green I don't know what the weather is like in that area of Montana normally but I, I was not turned off by the by the rain at all it was so beautiful and it made us wet but um, but it was okay you know um, we would go into uh, Glacier National Park and for the day and drive through things and they um, they did not open up the road to the Sun until the day before two days before we left um, so we just kind of checked other things out before we did that when we finally got to go to the right the road to the Sun um, we ended up just getting poured on <laughs> there wasn't a whole lot of Sun um, we there was lots of clouds we drove through clouds the kids were like oh now we know what the inside of a cloud is like yes it's it's wet and it's cold um, but it was beautiful there's so much water there rivers streams creeks waterfalls we got to the point when we were driving up the road to the Sun dad would slow down uh, he was the dr driver he would slow down for every waterfall um, and after a while we're like <laughs> he would call waterfall on the left 
yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there were so many waterfalls, you kind of just were like, oh, another waterfall. I mean, they were all beautiful, but there were so many of them. It was so, it's such, such a neat thing to see. Um, and they were just on the side of the road, you know, just the, the snow melting coming down. And um, then there were other ones that were obviously more grand. Um, we just had so much fun. There were so many beautiful flowers uh, that we stopped and took pictures of. Um, one of the ones that we liked a lot uh, is called bear grass, and it's these tall stalks. And they kind of look like like a puff ball of flowers at the top, um, and they kind of sp speckle themselves down the stem. and the, And they're and they're tall plants. Um, you could see them everywhere. They were white, and they were just real obvious. Uh, well, we come to find out that that bear grass doesn't. Um, doesn't flower but every five to ten years so the fact that we were able to see the bear grass all over the place in bloom was an awesome experience um, we just had so much fun um, the drive home was not nearly as much fun uh, that's when I uh, knit the second sock it was hot the RVs unless you run the generator um, there's no air conditioning in the back, uh, where you know the living area. So only Ron and, and Dad had uh, the RV, the air conditioning on them in the cab. Um, they tried to angle it so that the rest of us could get it, but it, it, it won't cool down an entire place, especially when it's 90 degrees outside. Um, and we were trying to conserve gas, um, so we didn't. So we didn't run the uh, generator as nearly as, as much as I, it would have been nice to. <laughs> um, and we took a different route home. It was a lot of, of farmland and plains, um, which is not nearly as, as enjoyable to, to, to look at um, as the mountains. Um, but we made it home. We actually came home a day early, um, which was nice because Ron and I were able to spend um, got home Thursday night, we were able to spend um, Friday, Saturday, and then today together, uh, today is Sunday, June 30th, um, and just, uh, the kids are still at my parents' house, um, so we just kind of had like a little mini vacation, just the two of us, after our vacation. Um, so we go back to work tomorrow, which will not be nearly as much fun as it sounds, <laughs> um, but uh but I think it's been a good break. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to go back to as far as, you know, my, my email account and the duties on my desk, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. I, I prepared as well as I could have for the trip and hopefully, um, or for my, my absence and hopefully that will have paid off. Uh, books. I did read two books. Um, well, I read several books on my trip. Um, I think, well, I read like, eight or nine graphic novels, so those don't really count, um, and, and a couple of audiobooks, and then uh, two physical books on my Kindle. Uh, the first one was Little Monsters by Kara Thomas. Uh, Kara Thomas writes kind of older YA thrillers, and I'm gonna sneeze. This was the um, second one that she has written. The first one is called uh, the Darkest Corners, and then she has one that came out last year, I believe, that is called Cheerleaders. Um, this was really good. I was I was surprised. Um, it it had me guessing all the way through. Um, Casey is a new girl in Broken Falls. When she moved in with her father, she stepped into a brand new life, a life with a stepbrother, stepmother, and strangest of all, an adoring younger half-sister. Casey's new life is eerily charming compared with the wild highs and lows of the old one she lived with her volatile mother. And everyone is so nice in Broken Falls. She's even welcomed into a tight-knit circle of friends. Bailey and Jade invite her to do everything with them, which is why it's so odd when they start acting distant. And when they don't invite her to the biggest party of the year, it doesn't exactly feel like an accident. But Casey will never be able to ask because Bailey never makes it home from that party. Suddenly, Broken Falls doesn't seem so welcoming after all, especially after everyone starts looking to the new girl for answers. Casey is about to learn some very important lessons. Sometimes appearances can be deceiving. Deceiving. Sometimes when you're the new girl, you shouldn't trust anyone. It was a really good thriller. 
I really enjoyed it, and um, it makes me very excited to read some more of Kara Thomas's works. Um, the other thing that I read was Verity by Colleen Hoover, and here is the cover of that one. That is a psychological thriller that I just finished last night, and uh, that one is a mind trip from page one. <laughs> just to let you know, it is not for the faint of heart. Um, it will sicken you and encapture you and make you feel icky and good and bad and all kinds of things. Um, but I, I do recommend it. I, I've read one other book by Colin Hoover, which she wrote with Taryn Fisher. Um, and I didn't really love that, but this was, um, I think this is her first real psychological thriller and I think she did a very good job of it. So I, I would recommend that one as well. And I guess, I guess that's it guys. Um, I'm going to go ahead and log off here. I've still got to do grocery shopping. We have no food in the house. Um, and we've basically been eating out since we got home and I can't continue that anymore. So, um, have a wonderful rest of your week. Happy July. That starts tomorrow. All right. I'll talk to you later. Bye.